Hey guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another virtual lecture. In today's video, we're going to learn how to evaluate fiscal policy. Now before that, let's do a little bit of recap. Now fiscal policy is basically policies that the government uh, use in order to influence spending and taxes. Okay, so those are the basic tools of fiscal policy. Again, what are they? Spending and taxes. We've also learned that there are generally two types of fiscal policy, right? One is the discretionary fiscal policy, okay, which can either be expansionary fiscal policy. That means we try to expand or uh, make the economy grow by using um, increased G or reduced T when the problem is either a recession or an increase or high unemployment. And then also under discretionary fiscal policy is a contractionary fiscal policy, where this is usually applied during times of very high inflation, where we would like to like slow down the economy a bit. So the tools of contraction fiscal policy is either to reduce spending or increase taxes. Okay, So th these both are basically discretionary fiscal policy, where the government would um, deliberately change the tools Okay, uh, going through law or by parliament debates. Okay, So the next, uh, the other category of fiscal policy, as we've learned, is non-discretionary. Okay, non-discretionary fiscal policy or also known as the automatic stabilizer. Okay, what it means by automatic stabilizer is because um, the taxes, okay, uh, it will adjust almost automatically uh, via the tax system. Okay, so when we have a problem of recession, okay, what it means is income is down, output is down. So uh, what we've learned before, uh, what happens is when there's a recession, the tax collected is also reduced. Okay, so this will in a way increase or encourage more spending. So it will be it will make the economy pick up and go back to normal. And when there's a problem for inflation, okay, the tax collector will be increased, so higher taxes would dampen or reduce consumption, okay, and that will bring the economy back to normal. Okay, so I hope uh, you're quite clear with the basic summary that we've done in about two minutes. So when we have an automatic stabilizer, Okay, so we know that the G would either be higher than T or the G would be lower than T, right? So we've learned that when government spending is more than taxation, this would lead to something called the budget uh, deficit, right? Meaning the government is spending more than it earns. And the other type of automatic stabilizer happens when the government spending is lesser than taxation. So this is a basic condition called a budget surplus. Okay, so the thing is when a budget deficit or budget surplus happens, okay, we do know that either the spending is more than or less than revenue. But we would like to know whether this is due or is it, a, is it because of the automatic stabilizer or is it because the government has actually conducted or done an expansionary fiscal policy or a contractionary fiscal policy? Because in practice, both of them are intertwined and it happens at the same time. So this is why we're going to learn how to evaluate fiscal policy. Let's look at this diagram. Okay. So economists use cyclically adjusted budget to evaluate whether the fiscal policy is expansionary, um, contractionary, or neutral. The idea is basically to compare actual government expenditures with the tax revenues that would have occurred if the economy had achieved full employment GDP levels. Now let's look at year one. Okay. So let's assume at year one, full employment happens. Okay, so at year one, we can see here the government spending is equivalent exactly equals to the amount of taxation collected at point A, okay, which is $500 billion. Okay, so as you can see here, there is a balanced budget because G equals to T. Okay, now C, a recession happens. So we know that when a recession happens, what it means is there's a fallen output, fallen income, and maybe possibly fallen employment as well. Okay, so let's just draw another or a new GDP level here. So this is, let's say, this is GDP at year two when the recession happens. Okay, let me just put in an arrow here, okay, to illustrate it better. So this is basically what we have is a recession, okay? Right, now at this recession point, we can see that G is no longer equal to T, correct? Okay, the amount of G, let's label this as B, the amount of government spending is, of course, it's fixed as 500 billion, okay, because as we know, G is a straight line, so regardless of what happens, the GDP level, the amount of government spending is the same. So government spending is 500 billion still, however, we can see at this point, the taxation 
Okay, let's put it as point C has fallen. Fallen to, okay, let me put this as 450 billion. Okay, so we can see here the amount of taxation has fallen in year two. Okay, so we actually have a budget deficit here. Okay, because G is higher than T. Okay, so this area, okay, let's shade this. This is called a budget deficit. Okay, or it's also known as a cyclical deficit. This budget deficit is also known as a cyclical deficit because this deficit area arises due to the cyclical um, phase of the business cycle, right? Recession. Now, as we can see here, this budget deficit area is not a result of a discretionary fiscal policy. Rather, it happens as a byproduct of the automatic stabilizer because we know when a recession happens, tax revenues are also automatically declined or fallen. That is why we have this cyclical deficit. Okay, now, so let's try to evaluate this diagram, okay? At year one, we can see we want to compare the government spending, which is 500 billion, and the tax revenue is also at 500 billion. So in other words, at year one, budget deficit is zero, okay? Because we have a balanced budget. Now let's look at year two. At year two, we need to compare the government spending, which is 500 billion, but now we need to compare it with the tax revenue that would have occurred at the full employment level, because at year two, full employment did not happen. So, effectively, we cannot compare point B with point C. Rather, we have to look at the tax at year two, but we need to look at the tax that would have occurred at the full employment level, which is also at point A. Okay, so in other words, at the full employment budget deficit, okay, at the full employment budget deficit year two, we are comparing 500 billion worth of government spending with also 500 billion worth of tax that would have occurred at the full employment level. Okay, so in other words, since both A, okay, since both A and B represent 500 billion, the full employment budget deficit in year two is also zero. So since they are both zeros, okay, government didn't change its fiscal policy, okay, although a recession took place. So now let's move on to years three and four, okay? So similar situation, at year three, we are experiencing full employment level, okay, so this is our GDP uh, amount, okay? So our government spending and tax revenues are equal at 500 billion at year three, right? No problem. Now see the following year, at year four, recession happened, okay? So let me just, again, um, label it, okay, so this recession happens, meaning there's a fallen output, right? Fallen output, fallen GDP. So recession happens. But now this time, the government took action. What happened is, the government would do a, a f expansion of fiscal policy. Okay, remember, recall, what are the options for the government to do when there's a recession? One way is to reduce taxation, right? So let's say that's what the government does this time, okay? So in this second year, we can see that the tax line is reduced, okay, to a new one. Okay, let me just sketch this. So this is our new tax, T2. Previously was T1. Okay, remember we're doing an expansion of fiscal policy by reducing the tax revenues. So we can see here we have several new points. Okay, here's a point H. Okay, whereby this is four, seven, five. Okay, and then we have a point F here, and we have a point G here. This G is four, two, five. Okay, so let's evaluate this diagram. At year three, when there's full employment happening, Government spending, which is 500 billion at point D, is exactly equals to the tax amount, also at 500 billion, right? So at year three, again, we can see we had a balanced budget. Now in the following year, as we can see, there's a recession, okay? So what we want to do is we want to compare the government spending with the tax revenue that would have occurred at the full employment level, okay? Just like the previous example just now. So the government spending at year four is the same, at 500 billion, which is point E. But now we need to compare it with the tax revenue that would have occurred at the full employment level. But as you can see, um, the government had reduced its tax revenues, right? So technically, it's basically G here, right? It's a new point. But we're not comparing with G. We are comparing it. Can we look at this 
a G point, but now we need to move back to the part or to the year where full employment happens. So here we need to go back to H because at H, this is where tax is collected when full employment happened. So I repeat, at year four, we're actually comparing the government spending, which is point E, with the tax revenues that is collected if the government is at the full employment level, which is at point H, which is we are comparing it 500 billion against 475 billion. So the difference here, this 25 billion is called the um, structural deficit. Okay, so this is the structural deficit. Deficit that arises because the government had implemented um, an expansionary fiscal policy. Whereas this entire area here, okay, this entire area, okay, is called the cyclical deficit. Similar to the case before, this triangle, this blue triangle is the cyclical deficit. The structural deficit area, DH, as you can see, because the movement from T1 to T2 is parallel, right? So this difference here, DH, is equivalent to the change here, right? FG, because they are parallel. Okay, this amount is also 25 billion. This amount is 25 billion. Okay, so from this diagram, you can see the actual deficit, okay? The actual deficit, which is EG, consists of two parts, which are cyclical deficit, EF and structural deficit FG. Okay, so that's basically the difference between this diagram and the previous diagram. So as we can see here, this is a bit different compared to before. Before, our cyclical deficit is arising because entirely due to the automatic stabilizer right here. As we can see, there's a cyclical deficit and there's also a structural deficit. This structural deficit, also known as the full employment deficit, is a result of the expansion fiscal policy or discretionary fiscal policy. We can illustrate this with a very simple um, calculation. Okay, at year three, we had a no budget deficit, right? Because earlier, as you can see here, earlier at year three, uh, 500 billion worth of G is equivalent to the 500 billion worth of T, right? So there's no, uh, no budget deficit, so it's zero. Okay, over GDP 3, okay, and times 100. So we actually got a zero, lah. there's no change. Okay, however, in year 4, you can see that we have a change. There's a $25 billion worth of um, structural deficit, right? So there's a change there because we are actually comparing. Let's show it a bit. Okay, at year 4, we can see we are comparing $400 billion worth of G okay with 475 billion dollars worth of t okay it's the t that happens at the full employment level okay so that is why let's write down okay there's a 25 billion dollars worth of uh, structural deficit over the gdp level which is gdp4 okay if you times with 100 you will have some sort of figure okay so as you can see there's an increase right there's an increase what that means is when there's an increase what it shows is the government has actually implemented an expansionary fiscal policy. So if you compare it with the case before, there's no such calculation because regardless whether it's at year one, okay, there's no change. G is equal to T, 500 billion. And year two, G is also equivalent to um, T at 500 billion. Okay, so in this case, the cyclical deficit is arising fully due to the automatic stabilizer. Whereas here, our actual deficit consists of two parts, the cyclical deficit and the structural deficit. Okay, I hope you can see the difference. Okay, let me put it together side by side. The difference between the case when this is fully due to automatic stabilizer and this is due to both automatic stabilizer as well as the expansionary fiscal policy.